Yeah? yeah? Right? Yes. Oh, deal? Boing. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. Welcome to the Acquia Podcast, Drupal Technology, Community and Business. module for that? There, of course there is. It's my great privilege and pleasure to be not only inside the United Nations headquarters at NYC Camp 2014, but also to be talking with the executive director of the Drupal Association, Holly Ross. How has NYC Camp been for you so far, Holly? I have had the best time here. It's been really great, actually. I think um, it's like a little, it's like a little DrupalCon. It's so international, and there's people here doing all kinds of things with Drupal. So it's been really exciting to hear about all the projects. And I think particularly today, they're sprinting on some really cool things. So I'm excited to see what comes of that. You've been with the Drupal Association for about a year now, mm -hmm. and I don't think that everyone knows you. So could you tell us a little bit about your background in both technology and open source and, and how that came together for this role for you? Yeah. So I think like all good Drupalers, um, in my previous life, I, it had nothing to do with technology. I'm just an English major <laughs> from UC Berkeley. Uh, and um, like good, all good English majors from UC Berkeley, I went uh, into community organizing after college. And at a certain point uh, in that pro, a certain point in that job, I realized, you know, we don't have to run the world on index cards, guys. Like maybe we should try this thing called Excel, right? And I sort of became the person uh, in the organization who was always trying to push people to move things onto the computer. And that's when I realized, oh, I actually like this stuff. I wish someone had told me that before. <laughs> um, so, so from there, um, I really started uh, working with technology in a much more general way um, and uh, helped uh, to run a lot of um, advocacy-based websites. So um, advocating for heritage forests and, and um, reducing fossil fuels in cars. So. Uh, did a lot of that kind of work. I landed at the Nonprofit Technology Network, uh, which is an organization whose mission is to help nonprofits create social change with te using technology. And uh, so from there, we just sort of, I, I am, uh, you know, a jack of all trades and a master of none. Um, we get to talk about PBXs and VoIP and, um, you know, networking and all that kind of stuff, as well as um, all the cool web technologies that are out there. So that was my background. And how did you end up at the DA? So one of the great things about the um, N10 community is that there are a group of really strong open source advocates um, that are part of that. And uh, one of the things that um, we started hearing about um, five or six years ago, seven years ago, really about seven years ago is when it really started coming up a ton was this Drupal thing. Um, gosh, even longer ago than that. Did you know that I'm getting old? <laughs> You, you didn't. You, you didn't date yourself when you were in, when you said you encouraged your colleagues to move from index cards to, to Excel. Excel. So. I know, right? <laughs> it's all right. We're past it. All right. So I'm old, and uh, what we did was um, we, um, we we ended up hearing a lot about Drupal. But that must have been more like 2004 or five, which is more like. It's pretty early, ago. though. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're hearing Drupal all the time. Um, and eventually, we moved our own website onto Drupal. Uh, I think version 5 was the version we moved yes. on to. Um, and really, the within even that open source community, um, the, the Drupal fans really just started amassing at N10, so much so that like we have a monthly Drupal meetup uh, online for folks that are in nonprofits and using Drupal, right? So, so that was my intro to the community. Uh, so when the position was available, I thought, these guys have something going on, and I like where this is going. It would be really fun to see if I could play, play with them. A year in to being the executive director of the Drupal Association, what's the most unexpected thing that you've seen or learned along the way? Well, <laughs> the most unexpected thing. You know, I think, um, I think that, well, I knew that the Drupal community was really, really diverse. Obviously, geographically, kind of work that you do, all that kind of stuff. Lots of diversity in the, in the Drupal community. I think I was actually, um, because I was more of an end user of Drupal and not a developer, a little bit surprised to get into the issue queues and realize how much 
vitriol can sometimes live inside of those issue cues. That was shocking to me at first. Um, and I feel like I understand where a lot of that comes from. It's not just the vitriol. The shocking thing is that I feel like at DrupalCon Portland, I would see two people that I'd just seen sort of like fighting to the death in an issue queue, like hugging and having a beer together. It was sort of shocking. <laughs> in the best way possible. So we meet in person a lot, and it's one of the things that Dries got right, mm -hmm. right from the beginning. We meet in person a lot because the human connection yeah. really strongly reduces flame wars and trolling and, and those kind of behaviors. Um, and actually, uh, in, in my job, uh, sometimes uh, translating between the business side of the house and the technology side of the house, often um, a normal tone of discussion. Right. Calm discussion, even in the issue cues, sounds a little bit extreme right. if you're not used to it. I think that the key factor that I'm sure you've observed is no matter how passionately one, be one person believes in her solution to a problem and someone else to his, everybody uh, trusts that we all have the project's best interests at heart. Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a real common ground there for... Yeah. No, I totally, yeah, I've seen that all over the place. And, and I think that's one of the great joys of, um, one of the great joys of being part of this all is, is that sense that we're all trying to go to the same place. And the connectedness we feel from that is really wonderful. And so... You know, I definitely want to figure out, like, how do we tap into that feeling more in a right. positive way? But that is, it's such a great feeling to be part of that current. And I would buy a DrupalCon t-shirt that said, DrupalCon, hugs and beers. <laughs> Duly noted, because we're working on those right now. It's a great, it's a great <laughs> image, and it's, it's really true. There's, yeah. The human side of this technology project is by far the most exciting, interesting, and important part of what we do. Yeah. Absolutely, and I think what's really cool is that the humans are so different. I, um, it didn't surprise me, but one of the things that, one of the things I was really excited to learn was just how many musicians are in the community. For example, I mean, I definitely see the relation there, but there's so many musicians and artists and people who were English majors, and I think it's such a neat thing. There's an incredible number of scientists as well, mm -hmm. uh, uh, physicists especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a big musician connection, that's true. So talk about someone showing up to their first Drupal event. How does that feel? And what it, you know, they want to learn, they've got an idea. Yeah. What happens? Right, so I think one of the things that, um, so again, early, I'm going to go back to DrupalCon Portland because that was my first DrupalCon. Um, and one of the things I was so excited about and impressed with was the work that Kathy Faze and XJM um, and all the others put into the Sprint Mentoring Program. Um, the fact that um, they, they put so much energy and time into crafting, not only like having mentors around the room being like, hey, do you guys have questions, but actively going out and making sure that people know that if you don't, if you've not done this before, we're going to help you. Um, and having special time set aside to help people get set up. Um, and not just sort of passively waving the flag, right? Like, we welcome, we welcome new people. That's how a lot of communities do it, right? They say they welcome people. But here we have all these folks who are going above and beyond, putting in all kinds of extra time to make sure that they're actively seeking those folks out and making them feel welcome. It was really amazing. Yeah, and I love being in a room of people trying to solve problems together um, at, and the, from absolutely the most diverse mm -hmm. backgrounds you can think of. That's so, that's so exciting. And it's really important, too, I think, because um, I talked a little bit about this yesterday, but I am definitely a big believer in the fact that we have to challenge each other uh, and in order to come up with the best solution possible. Um, and that challenge, it doesn't have to be, I don't mean challenge in a combative way, but I think that we need challenge that comes from a diversity of experience and thought. Um, so the idea that you could put a solution on the table, and sure, it absolutely solves the problem, but is it solving it in the best way or most inclusive way or in a way that aligns with our values, right? Those are the other kinds of things we have to think about. And having people from different backgrounds and different experiences um, means that they'll ask those questions, right? So, oh, if you did it that way, it'd be more accessible and, you know, accessibility is something we value. So let's, maybe we'll do it that way. We heard 
the keynote address yesterday of the United Nations Chief Information Technology Officer, and she put a few challenges mm -hmm. on the table for us. One that I found very interesting was when she said, think about the consequences of what you're doing. Think about your technology. Think about your impact in 50 years. Mm -hmm. And that was something that I hadn't thought about so much. Uh, then you got into a panel discussion following the keynote, um, and I was very interested in the part talking about technology as, um, um, or the role of technology in change, in the role of technology in making the world a better place. Yeah. So I fundamentally fundamentally believe that technology can create positive change. I mean, I've done that for almost my whole professional career at this point. Um, and I will say I've been really annoyed at, um, I get really annoyed right now because that's actually something that gets said a lot, right? Like tech companies all the time are saying, we're going to change the world with this. We're going to change the world with this. And I fail to see how knowing where Fred is having dinner tonight is changing the world, right? Right. Or, or, or getting you to click on an ad in an exciting new way. Right. It's just, it's not world changing <laughs> in my definition. So I get really mad, but I do think that there is, I, I, I feel like they undermine the idea, which is I think really valid and true, that we can use technology in ways that are, are useful um, and, and help make the world a better place. And there's definitely lots of opportunity for Drupal to do that. And I think lots of Drupalers have demonstrated that. So you know, we had that great project um, coming out of Portland to help the folks who um, Right, were, for the uh, Oklahoma yeah. uh, tornado. tornado. Yeah, that Not was Not a amazing. hurricane, tornado. Right. Yes. Yes. <laughs> for, the, for the folks who... Um, who had been through the tornadoes and they, they, you know, they sprinted for 48 hours straight and built something that helps people connect that actually ended up getting used uh, by, by the government, which is fantastic. And, you know, here today um, we have folks who are sprinting to build a tool that will help you understand um, it, what impact your new project might be having on the environment. Wow. Which is really cool. Josh Koenig gave a session yesterday mm -hmm. uh, that I found very interesting. He also has a long history of activism. He was involved in the Howard Dean campaign. He ran a company called Civic Space, which was Drupal for activists, yep. basically. And he pointed out that the, mo the, the most empowering thing that we can do as technologists mm -hmm. is probably removing the middlemen. Mm -hmm. And Drupal is this incredible tool for empowering people to communicate with each other, removing barriers. So Drupal 8 is highly multilingual, is much easier to use. So I have this hope that um, we can put more power in the hands of more disadvantaged people to let them help themselves or express clearly what they actually need or what their, you know, what their situation is. Yeah, I think that's a great point. Um, I think that's a great point when you talk a lot about, especially international work, and we've talked about that a lot here at the UN this week. That work is so difficult because um, it's often, you know, what the solution is is often um, dictated from someone who is sitting up above what's actually happening on the ground. And so the more that we can use technology to enable um, the average person on the ground to articulate what's going on and, and say what they need, um, I think the better, yeah. I'm really hopeful that as, as, as the Drupal project too, that we can, we can look back and feel proud that we've, that we've contributed something positive to the world too in, in 50 years, so. I think that's possible. Yeah, I, I've accepted the challenge to go and think about actionable things that I could do or I'd like to find projects that people are doing mm -hmm. with open source, with Drupal, that, that, that might meet that challenge, so. Yeah, there's no shortage. The UN um, uh, anti-poverty campaign, uh, they just finished a whole round of organizing. I think it was over 187 million people took part in events around the world. Um, that's 2% of the world's population that just participated in anti-poverty events around the world. And all that was, it's not, because of Drupal, right? But there was a Drupal site at the center of all of that work. Wow. So that's a lot of power that we have. Holly, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. It's really great to see you. I always love to sit down with you. Thanks. Thanks.
Nadia for good. It is my great. <laughs> We're getting good. Camera, Nadia for good. It is my great. <laughs> <laughs>